What's up guys? So listen, for today's video, I'm about to go out fishing with Johnny from Fish the Moment. And one of the questions that he asked me earlier was, how do you set up your kayak for filming? Fish on! All right, so let's jump into it real quick. And I'm gonna do a short rundown. Now, I use the GoPros forever, right? And I've tried pretty much every action camera known to man. And you guys have been watching me play around with these new Tacticams. Um, actually, you've been seeing me play with the prototypes and now I have the new Tacticams. I wanna talk to you about the pros and cons to kind of why I use the, the GoPro and what I use the Tacticam for, what the differences are, and honestly, why I'm gonna continue to use both, but really what advantages there are to using the Tacticam. So here's the thing, when it comes to filming yourself, you can get as simple as setting up a mount on the front of the kayak and uh, just filming yourself talking and hook sets, or you can get elaborate with a whole bunch of different crazy angles. So let's talk about that right now. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through the basic setup. So one of the things that you'll see on the kayak that I'm putting Johnny in over here is he simply got a Yolo Tech pole with the powered base and a GoPro on top, which is great for that conversational stuff and just filming yourself talking about the fish that you caught. And to be honest with you, one of the tricks in video, a lot like long arming it when you're talking about taking photos is that when you have that cameraman out front or like this one right here that you have out front for me, when you pick that fish up out of the water and you hold it up in front of the camera, it just makes that fish look that much bigger, right? It gives you that impact of that big fish and it finishes the catch. So one of the things that you're doing when you're filming is you're telling a story. You're telling a story from the cast to the presentation to the hook set. And the reason that most of you guys are watching videos is, is results, like you wanna see the fish. So showing that fish to the camera in front of you is the end of the story. It's the payoff, it's the punchline, right? It's the part that we're all in it for in a lot of cases. Now we want the story, we want the tips, we want the tactic, we want the techniques, right? We want all that. So Johnny, when it comes to fishing and filming from a kite, what was some of the first questions like that you had, right? What? when you didn't know anything about filming from a kayak, what was probably the first question that you had? Yeah, one thing I was kind of worried about is trying to get really wide angles because when I'm trying to film in my boat, I want to capture the scenery. I want you guys to see what type of banks I'm fishing, what type of covers around, maybe in the sky what the clouds look like. And so from a kayak, you're a little more limited from the different angles you can place cameras. And so I see the chat has four different cameras here and I can see why given the you know, limitations on the space, you have to get creative with your camera angles just so you can get that whole landscape view. So guys, what I do for a really simple setup, and actually now that I've gotten this Tacticam set up to where I can actually use this remote and I can actually sync up all three cameras simultaneously, I'm gonna be able to bring a lot more of that to you guys for all of my shooting. Now, in the past, I've done great front angles in some videos and great back angles in some videos and then great side angles in some videos and then on top of that great underwater and other videos what i'm going to strive to do moving forward is to bring you guys great back side front and underwater fighting and release angles from all of my videos right in the past when i used gopro exclusively the remote was great but the problem was the remote was wi-fi and so when the Wi-Fi stayed on, it sucked the battery. If you turn the cameras off, you can't turn them back on with Wi-Fi. So if you've got a camera like this one that's way in the back, you have to get out of the kayak to set it up. If you've got this one up here that you can't reach, you've got to get out of the kayak to set it up. If you leave the Wi-Fi on, you're burning through batteries. If you're going three cameras, you're burning through batteries three times as fast. So I've got a bag full of batteries. I've got <laughs> all of this stuff that I've experimented with and I've dialed it down to a system. And here's my system. I like the fact that GoPro has this lock and load system that allows me to mount bases around the kayak. Then I don't actually have to change the entire location of the mount. What I have to do is reach down, pop this lever open, just like so, and I can take that camera and move it to the other side. So if I'm fishing down the right bank and I've got the camera on the right side, but I want it on the left side, I pop that off and move it over. I also like the fact that it articulates here and then with this panfish, it actually articulates in the middle, which allows you to turn the head. So you can basically get any camera angle that you want from the seat position of your kayak. I love this straight ahead conversational camera in the front. And what I also like about this setup is 
you can pop this off and then that camera if you're really trying to keep it simple doubles as your vlogging camera so you can hold this camera out in front of you you can grab the base down here i've actually added an extension here this base comes without this extension but it gives me a lot more articulation and a lot more creativity what you can also do with this camera is spin it around and shoot down the river so so for my recent river fishing video i had this camera facing down the river like this and then when i caught the fish i would spin it around and do commentary so what i'm going to start doing moving forward is leave that camera facing backwards and i'm going to take this camera and get that off to the side kind of commentary angle if you look here it's going to really give a good you know lay of the land but what's also cool is i actually use two mounts but for the sake of this for the sake of this video but i will just grab this camera move it around to the back and pop it into this location right here to get that over the shoulder backwards look now because i'm finally happy with the remote that works because the tacticam remotes are rf instead of wi-fi i can set this camera up back here get that way back look not only do i get the way back look from way back here tacticam also offers a wide angle lens an intermediate lens and a narrow lens so you can actually for the first time with an action camera truly get zoom so if you notice i've got a mount here i've got a mount here I've got a mount here. I've got a lot of different angles for creative camera angles. But what's also cool is I'm gonna flip this around and with that little knuckle holding it like a pistol grip, you can put that pole out there, put your camera on the end of that stick and you've got a great selfie vlog stick. But what I really use this for is I have one in the back and I lay one between my legs and this is my underwater release camera. If you take this camera and you mount it in this position, actually, let me just take it and show you. You pop this off. You set this up just like so and then you flip that upside down you can actually see that guys you can actually lean over have this head upside down with your gopro on upside down and when you lean over and drop the fish into the water you automatically get that underwater release shot first time i've ever showed anybody exactly how i get that shot but i keep that pole either inside the hatch of the kayak or running along the side like a rod holder and when i get that shot where i want to release that fish I pop that pole out, flip the camera upside down, and as I lean in, as I lean in to drop the fish in the water, I kind of follow the pole, let the fish go, and 90% of the time, it swims right past the camera. So what's cool about this setup is you can get as crazy with it as you want or as easy with it as you want. Back in the day, I started with a pole uh, duct taped into my black pack with a camera up on the top of it and got the over the shoulder. The over the shoulder, in my opinion, is the primary shot if you get that shot right there over the shoulder you're killing it if you take the yak attack mount and put one in the front one in the back after you catch the fish you can bring your camera around to the front up here and get that forward shot get that hero holding the fish shot do the screen grab or, or do the um you know the voice control take photo and you're gonna have really creative content now i want to talk to you real quick about the difference between gopro and tacticam it's the number one question that everybody's going to ask. So it's the number one question that I'm going to answer. Do I use GoPro? Absolutely. I have several GoPros. I've used them for years. I like these, you know, these microphone covers. So I actually created one for my Tacticam. Now, so you're going to say to yourself, if you like GoPro, why are you switching to Tacticam? It's because I want multiple angles. I want to be able to manage boat position. And at the same time, I don't want to have to manage batteries like a madman and so with the gopro voice control i thought it was the answer but i'm going to be honest with you if you've got that camera up there and then you've got that camera up there and then you've got this camera back here every single time you say gopro start recording one will turn on it actually turned off when you say it to one camera it'll turn on and the other one will turn off because it actually can't differentiate start recording from stop recording so it'll actually stop so as you notice there, yet again, because I, this is a GoPro that I'm talking to, um, yeah, it just kept changing. So let me switch to my other camera real quick. So here's what it boils down to, guys. When it came to voice control, I thought GoPro had literally knocked it out of the park. The problem for me is if I couldn't reach this camera back here, right there, right there, and I said GoPro start recording and it stopped recording, then all my cameras got off sync. And when I would get home, over the course of a six or eight hour day, I would have 75 or 80 little clip files of me trying to get the cameras all synced back up. If you think syncing footage up 
is already a pain in the butt, try syncing the footage up after you've also got 30 or 40 out of sync clips. So the voice control is great for one camera. It sucks for multiple cameras. It's not effective, it doesn't work. And so for me, what's a killer with the filming with all different multiple angles is this remote. The remote is easy to set up. You basically turn the cameras on, you pause the remote, you pause the camera, you hold down the mode button, and you hold down the power button within two seconds, and the number on the indicator goes up. Then you can add up to five cameras is what they say in the books. I've actually added nine, so I don't know if those all nine will work, but you add the cameras to it. Here's what's crazy about it. You can actually turn the cameras on and off. With GoPro, if you leave the cameras off, you can't turn them on with a remote because it has to have the Wi-Fi signal. So if you leave the Wi-Fi signal on to turn the camera on, then the Wi-Fi signal is running the battery down faster than just leaving the dang camera running. So it's maddening. So when I found the Tacticam and I found out that those guys were gonna be developing a fishing specific application, I was on board. I spent two years beating them up over the functionality. I spent two years beating them up over the price. And the product is what you see here on my kayaks, the new Tacticam Fisheye. It's a price point feature rich, but not a whole bunch of crap that you don't need. I don't need a screen on the back of my camera because 90% of the time I'm in front of it. <laughs> so spending that money on a crystal LED display on the backside didn't make sense. Having that weight of that camera out on the end of one of these poles is another problem because with these longer poles, when you have that much weight out at the end, it causes flex, which causes, you want a little bit of wobble because that adds real world. But if you put too much wobble, it just gets so nasty that it doesn't look realistic. So listen, that's my basic setup. I've mounted gear tracks in places where I wanted them, where they didn't come on the boat. And then I've used the tracks that are already mounted on my SS-127. If you had Yak Attack gear tracks, the camera mounts, or if you go with the Yolo Tech with the powered bases, if you don't want to have to deal with changing batteries, all fantastic options. The idea is to start small, add one camera. After you get where you're mastering that content, add a second camera. And then when you really want to get creative, add a third camera, add an underwater camera, and then just get out there, have a good time. And so the only reason that I encourage you to start filming your catches is for me, the only thing better than catching a fish is catching it twice. And when you catch it on camera, you caught it a second time and it's fun to share it with you guys. Hope you'd like this video. Do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button, leave a comment in the comment section. And if I hadn't said so yet, subscribe. Like do it now, don't think about it. Turn on the notifications bell, do all that good stuff. That way you'll know each and every time I release a new video.